Just survive. Sometimes you don't realize how important something is until it's no longer there. I'm playing the best tennis of my life, but I feel nothing. You're not numb. We just gotta unlock it. How can I help you fellas? Harris left us alone. You have to help us build a chicken slingshot? Yes, I'll help you hurt my chickens. But first, you boys have to help me dig two child-sized holes in the backyard and lay in them to make sure I measured them correctly. Deal? <laughs> now attend the quick actions of Secret Service agents thwart another attempted assassination of former President Donald Trump, this time at his Florida golf club. What we're learning about the man now in custody and the latest on the investigation. And thousands of firefighters continue making progress on three large fires that have scorched more than 100,000 acres all across Southern California. How current weather conditions are helping them in their firefight. And TV's biggest stars all gather for the 76th Primetime Emmy Awards. We've got the night's biggest winners and most unforgettable moments. Now, on the News at 10. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the News at 10. I'm Rick Chambers. And I'm Kareen Winter. Details are emerging tonight surrounding the 58-year-old suspect arrested for staging an assassination attempt on former President Donald Trump. Now, the records show that the suspect, Ryan Wesley Routh, had prior run-ins with the law, appearing in uh, court several times since the 90s. A Secret Service agent, though, shot at Routh as he hid in the bushes with a rifle lying in wait along Trump's international golf course near Mar-a-Lago. Routh fled the scene but was arrested minutes later. Our Carlos Sacedo joins us here in the studio with developing details. Carlos. Rick Kareen, we are learning more information about the suspect who authorities say tried to take Mr. Trump's life. Ryan Routh is from Hawaii. The car he was detained in is registered to his daughter. Tonight, a motive is still unclear, but Routh was a passionate supporter of Ukraine. The FBI is saying Trump was the intended target of an assassination attempt, the second in as many months. A thorough investigation is underway into the assassination attempt on former President Donald Trump at his Florida golf course in West Palm Beach. Former President Donald Trump is safe and unharmed. Authorities identifying the suspect as 58-year-old Ryan Routh. Some of the items recovered at the scene include backpacks and a recording device. In the bushes where this guy was is an 8K47 style rifle with a scope. Two backpacks which were hung on the fence that had a uh, ceramic tile in them and a GoPro. Trump was not injured during the incident that took place just before 2 p.m. local time. Authorities say the gunman was about 400 yards from Mr. Trump. A Secret Service agent fired at the suspect, who authorities say was pointing an AK-style rifle with a scope into the club where Trump was playing golf. What they do is they have an agent that jumps one hole ahead of time to where the president was at. And he was able to spot this rifle barrel sticking out of the fence and immediately engage that individual. The suspect dropped the rifle before getting into an SUV, where he was later taken into custody, pulled over on a Florida highway. Ralph of Hawaii has been active on social media, critical of Trump, while expressing support for Ukraine, raising funds for foreign fighters. Hours after the incident, President Trump emailing his supporters, quote, I am safe and well. Nothing will slow me down. I will never surrender. This comes just nine weeks after the Republican presidential nominee survived another attempt on his life at a campaign rally in Pennsylvania. Vice President and Democratic presidential nominee Kamala Harris put out a statement reading in part, quote, I condemn political violence. We all must do our part to ensure this incident does not lead to more violence. Trump's running mate, Ohio Senator J.D. Vance, posting on X. I'm glad President Trump is safe. I spoke to him before the news was public, and he was amazingly in good spirits. And President Biden also put out a statement commending the work done by the Secret Service. Tonight, Mr. Trump is safe back at his Mar-a-Lago resort. He also thanked the Secret Service via social media. Again, the suspect is in custody tonight. It's unclear, though, what charges he will be facing. Rick? All right, Carlos, thank you for that. As the presidential race enters its final weeks now, former President Donald Trump and Vice President Kamala Harris are again starting to hit the campaign trail. 
On Tuesday, Trump will host a town hall in Flint, Michigan. On Wednesday, he'll make a stop in Uniondale, New York. And then on Thursday, Trump will address the Israeli-American Council Summit in Washington, D.C. Meanwhile, during press interviews this weekend, his running mate, J.D. Vance, continues to back those claims that Haitians living in Ohio are abducting and eating pets. Officials there still insisting there is no evidence of such behavior. As for Harris this week, she'll be attending a roundtable with Teamsters tomorrow at the union's headquarters in Washington, D.C. And on Tuesday, she'll participate in a fireside chat that's being hosted by the National Association of Black Journalists. That'll be in Philadelphia. On Thursday, she's traveling to Michigan, where she's going to be joined by Oprah in an event with grassroots groups. And then on Friday, she'll be heading to Wisconsin. All right, turning now to the forecast. Cooler weather all across SoCal is helping firefighters battling three large wildfires in the region. Yeah, but the fight is far from over at this point. The bridge fire, that's burning in both Los Angeles and San Bernardino counties. It sits at more than 50,000 acres tonight. It's only 9% contained. It broke out a week ago, and 54 structures have already been destroyed. More than a dozen others have been damaged, and some 12,000 remain threatened. Two people have also been hurt, but no word on what caused that fire. And they needed some good news tonight for residents near the line fire in San Bernardino County. Growth has slowed. The flames torched more than 38,000 acres, and it's now 42% contained. One structure has been destroyed and four others damaged. One person has been arrested in connection with starting the fire. Many of the evacuation orders have been downgraded to evacuation warnings tonight. And progress is being made in containing the airport fire in Orange County. Officials say that blaze, which has burned nearly 24,000 acres, is now 19% contained. The airport fire has destroyed 160 structures and at least 14 people, including 11 firefighters, have been injured. And our cool weather is certainly helping those firefighters out on the line. Here's Kai. He's got your forecast. Oh, thanks so much, Rick Kareen. Well, good evening, everybody. Yes, indeed. The Weather just perfect, and now we're starting to settle into really favorable conditions for firefighters on the lines, and we want to thank them all. Taking a look at downtown, the onshore flow really pulling the marine layer in tonight, but the big story is the smoke that still surrounds the Southern California atmosphere. You are looking at that air quality alert for about the next 24 hours. It could be extended into Tuesday, but again, the onshore flow going to give some filtration to the atmosphere finally, but look at the numbers. It's beautiful outside. Burbank, 64, and again, the clouds moving in the San Fernando Valley, the Inland Empire there in the mid-60s, Lancaster at about 61 degrees. We are beginning to develop some stronger northwesterly winds, especially up into the high country, and a lot of the Nevada-California borders will take this wind advisory through at least tomorrow night. Got a lot to go through. Could see some wet weather tomorrow morning, maybe Thursday morning, and then a warm-up just in time for fall. Back to you. The 76th Annual Emmy Awards are officially in the books tonight, and as usual, the awards ceremony was full of surprises and snubs. Our Jeremy Parsons has more from downtown Los Angeles. Guys, the 76th Primetime Emmy Awards did not disappoint. The stars were out, lots of fun was had, and lots of history was made. It's the 76th Emmy Awards. Shogun went into tonight's ceremony with the most Emmy nominations, 25, and they had a huge night. Anna Sawai Shogun! Hiroyuki Sanada. And the Emmy goes to Shogun. Shogun picked up statues for drama series, Hiroyuki Sanada for Best Actor, and Anna Sawai.